don't be afraid, we're not stealing your boys. <laughs> if I could say that once, I'd say it a thousand times. I've been a Scoutmaster, I've been a Sister Scoutmaster, I've been through Cubbing, I've been through all of the program. You'll find nothing else out there that works like it works. And I can't find a hole anywhere in it, and I keep wondering how. So from a Scoutmaster's perspective, I'm sold. As having been a Scoutmaster and an advisor to a venture crew, we found that as the boys got older, they began to be distracted by those wonderful things that come about at the age of 15, 16, 17. Well, I've been involved with Boy Scouts for a long time as a Scoutmaster and troop leader. And I've seen over the years a lot of boys that uh, start to lose interest at 14, 15 years of age because their interests have diversified. Venturing crews uh, keep those older boys active that we would maybe lose, as we say, to sweat, perfume, and, and cars. We found last year that by introducing a venture crew into our troop, we were able to include girls, and we were able to include more people and develop bigger programs, high adventure programs, and all the kinds of things that older kids like. We also have those uh, young men and young women who have never experienced the scouting experience, but want to be in the outdoors, also want to be led to have a strong uh, faith following and to really enjoy themselves. And uh, uh, the Vention program gives them that opportunity. They go to the school and they're talking among themselves about how much fun they'd had the weekend before canoeing or hiking or whatever it might have been. But the other youth in the school are looking at them, what is this venturing? I want to do this, I want this fun, I want this excitement. It's something these kids today need. The benefit to our program, to kicking off on the venturing crew, was these guys had someplace to go immediately. It allowed them to bring their now junior high school, senior high school females into it. And our last trip to the sea base last year uh, caused a lot of the parents to come to me and ask me if I could take the sisters, their daughters, along on the trip too. I really didn't know how to do that and talked to uh, our district executive and she told me, well, why don't you form a venture crew and take everybody, the boys and the girls, and see how that works out. We had parents that had teenage girls that were looking for an outlet for them to have high adventure too. Uh, so our scoutmaster originally was a bit hesitant, as some of them are, but in the last two years he has really become an advocate of venturing and has seen that has strengthened his troop. With the venture, there were young ladies in there, and my son was always eager to go to a venture meeting, always eager to go to an outing. If you have a son, would you like for him to be dating a girl in venturing or scouting who has the same values he has? And if you have a daughter, would you want her to be dating a boy who's an Eagle Scout or working toward Eagle and obviously has the values you would like to have in a boy that's taking your daughter out? Or maybe somebody else she goes to school with. Boys and girls went off and explored Key West for a day together and uh, it was a very pleasant thing to see them work together and to have fun together in a context that was safe, context that had a purpose and had a meaning, in a context where they could have a good time. We have girls camping in their own tents on their side of the campground, the boys in their tents on their side of the campground. Um, these youth wrote their bylaws. They wrote their disciplinary actions themselves, and they're policing themselves far better than I ever could. One of the first meetings was they set the ground rules. And the ground rules are that the boys and girls are together, uh, no holding hands, no hugging, kissing, because this is their program, and if that's to come about, then they set the fines. They were probably harder on themselves than we would have been. We have not had the crisis that you think you might have in that situation, and I believe it's because of the quality of the kids and the quality of the adults. They enjoy each other's company, uh, they are teenagers, but by and large the quality of the youth you're dealing with and what they want out of the program drives the fact that they tend to behave themselves farther, far better than people expect them to. We've taken some of the, the young men and young women out on courses and uh, the young men have, didn't like the idea that the women, that the young females did better than they did. Uh, but when they got back into the, the meeting environment, they all laughed about it. So you said, well, this is, this is the growing process. This is what it's all about. 
why didn't the BSA think of this a few years ago? As a woman in scouting, I am excited that girls have an opportunity to learn leadership. There are a lot of places out there that girls can learn management skills. There's a lot of places they can learn a lot of things, but very few places they can learn the leadership skills that scouting has taught boys for the last 90 years. A venturer who uh, elects to can continue in the Boy Scout Advancement Program, or the venturer can choose to go into the Venturing Advancement Program and ultimately can win uh, through an enormous amount of hard work and energy the Ranger Award. It is required for each one of those advancements that you spend 45 minutes an hour teaching what you've learned out of part of that award. The youth have to go back and teach someone else this item, this information. They spend time learning more teaching than just absorbing the information as they would have in the past. And that, in turn, increases their leadership skills and is building their own leadership skills for the future. So everything they learn, they retaught it again. So that meant they got it twice, and then they took the troop out, the older ones that was old enough to do it, did the same thing. So it was a threefold thing. They learned it, they taught it, and then they watched it being performed. And that has a magic effect on the younger boys. It keeps them interested and keeps them in longer because they now have a role model of an older boy who they, who they respect and who they're interested in speaking to. And it's quite a status symbol for a 12-year-old to be sitting there and getting advice from a 15 or 16-year-old. They become effective role models and effective counselors. There's a hero thing going on there that adults can't get. You know, a child is never going to look up to us the way they look up to their older brother or an older boy in the troop. So it really motivates that younger scout to be active and stay active, to want to be an eagle, to want to be a venturer. I had a son that was working on his eagle who was still in scouting, but he also went into the venturing program. So he finished the eagle scout as a boy scout, but at the same time he was also in a venture crew, uh, and I think that probably helped him. When these youth join a venture crew, never having had any scouting background, we suddenly find new members of a Boy Scout troop trying to make their eagle. It's like uh, coming in the back door, they're getting the scouts in the back door through the venture crew. So we create a continuity of a, of a seven or eight year program for kids instead of what most kids viewed early on as a two or three year program. One of the things we lose in scouting often is the experience cycle because people stay involved for the three or four years their sons are in the program. And by extending it, we keep the adults in an extra couple of years. And that helps every troop when you have that longevity. We're having so much fun that they want to go, they want to be involved. And uh, the more we get out and they see us having a good time, they come up and say, can I be a part of your group? and you have to, actually we have to be careful not to have too many adults. Perhaps we're a bit embarrassed by riches, but we have so many parents that are eager to be involved with the venturing that sometimes we have too many. Uh, basically the parents uh, of the older children in the troop plus the girls that wanted to get in have just jumped in and taken hold of the thing. And it's been great. I mean, we've had a line of people waiting, fortunately, that want to work on it because it's, it's young adults, it's not having to babysit or not have to worry about are these kids ready to go. These guys are not only ready to go, but they're excited about the program. So the committee side of it was real easy. So those are the, some of the advantages that, uh, that Venturing's had. They're out in the wilderness. They're doing things that m most people only dream about doing. And here they are, they're doing it. They're living the life, they're enjoying it. I think it's a great program. Troop leaders, whether they're scoutmasters or crew committees, will find that venturing invigorates their troop, strengthens their troop, uh, gives a great deal of incentive and enthusiasm to the younger scouts. My son looked at me one day, he said, I'm an Eagle Scout, and I've had a wonderful time in the Boy Scouts, but mom, venturing's the bomb. And that's kind of the reaction we've had from the other kids. So I just, I recommend it to everyone. And if I can say it again, I'll say it a thousand times, we are not gonna steal your boys. You will be amazed at how it retains them because of the co-ed, because of the high adventure side of it. So I think Scoutmasters should not 